Hello guys, so I thought I can do two factions in one go because uh, to not extend it too much and tomorrow we will go for patch notes and because there are a lot of patch notes that are pretty interesting especially for Nilfgaard but for today we are looking at Skellige and Monsters so for Skellige, we, first we have Feral Bond spawn Skellige Wolves on an enemy row uh, and damage it by one then create a Bronze Skellige Warrior, Blood First free, you may spawn and play and bronze Skellige Warrior instead. So this card is pretty powerful. So basically you can create Skellige Warrior, but you lose one power in theory, like in theory, because uh, your opponent is giving one free power in form of immune wolf or wolves, but it's one unit. Uh, I think I have it here. So if you if you see, yeah, Skellige Doomed, immune, spawn a copy yourself on opposite row. Yeah, so that's already good. Why? Because it's four provision and you can get like six provision cards. Of course, you can get a random, so some of them will be bad and you won't like to see them. But in general, it's kind of you get bonus in form of provision. And also it's a uh, special, which sometimes is it's sometimes better than just a unit. But RNGs can screw you. However, blood first free, you may spawn and play any bronze Skellige Warrior instead. That's when it shines, because uh, you can get anything, and it means that, for example, you always can get an extra grace sword for, for provision, for example, or some six pro other six provision warriors that I don't know what we have. We can just quickly check if we are here. Uh, warrior for Skellige and only bronzes. Like, look, we can get a veteran, for example, if you need something, if you want to counter some random pinging damage, or you can get uh, another Dramon Sheet Maiden for Lippy Deck, for example, or another High Lord Warlord to make your rights even bigger and better. Uh, and some of the conditional cards like Brogward Archer, maybe like you need an engine uh, or another engine, you know, or a big tall unit. Like, depending on the situation, you can pick anything, and picking anything is so, so much better than uh, having to put that card in the deck. So, if you can get Blood First free going on, this card is absolutely nuts. And on top of that, you sometimes will get bonus to power on top of it. So, if you can get Blood First free and then kill it uh, the, the, from random pinging damage, and there are a lot of random pinging damage in uh, Warriors, then this card is absolutely nuts. And you, it might be even played in outside of Skellige Warriors deck. You can just play it in like a even a Hemi deck just to get this... Uh, random Skellige Warrior from time to time, that the one that you just need. This card is very good, and I think it will be played in a lot of Skellige decks. And this is Wolves, and now we go Lok and Brokvar Warrior. So another card that you can choose from the right. Deploy damage and enemy unit by 3. If the target is damaged, repeat the deployed ability with a different target and decrease the damage by 1. So if you're not sure how it works, first you cannot kill the unit. It has to... Uh, the, the power has to be red, basically. And second of all, you cannot hit the first target with the third hit. So you cannot do 3, 2, 1, you know? Uh, so you, it has to be three different targets. In theory, the, this card can be 8 power, which is a lot for 4 provision cards. However, in most of the cases, it will be probably, I would say, 7, which is already nice. But the problem is that you won't kill anything. If you want to play just for full value, and as a 4 provision, you probably would like to, you will like to play this card in your deck. It's, this card is pretty good. Sometimes it will be bad, because sometimes it will be just only damage by free. And if you look at the other factions, for example, uh, Scoia'tael has a damage by free in, for, for, in, form of, in, for, in form of, for example, Dwarf or an Elf, that just, you know, by the number of rows or the, that the one power uh, Dwarf, that are just better because they uh, have better base power or they can deal free again. So this card is on the weakened side on this from, front, but it can generate more points in general because you have this two and one point. The problem is you cannot kill uh, anything and in some metas this card will be horrible. For example, if the um, monster swarm is a meta and I'm su super surprised that it's not because this is super powerful deck that people always sleep on. Uh, or in Keltulis metas, this card will be absolutely horrible. It will play for 
five for four and sometimes even less if you have to hit like armor or something so it would just play for two so this the, the card is a little bit depending on the meta and it might sometimes not get to tournament decks but on another i think in on average it will be a good seven power for four card so you probably will play it especially in warrior decks uh, at least one of i think you will play and but even if you don't play it it's nice that it's in game because you can discover it from the or create it from the right that we just saw so that's another thing about this kind of cards that sometimes you won't put them in the deck but it's good that they are in the game next card we have ulula very simple card damage a unit by two on order, whenever an enemy takes damage from your warriors, so damage it by one, ignoring its armor. So basically, whenever anything hits, uh, you, that's simple, you get extra damage. So it's a nice uh, extra pinging. Uh, if it's AoE damage, like you deal two to everything, it won't work, but if you, if you, if it's like Hemdal, which is like pew, 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 uh, she will get the bonus point. So with Hemdal, she's like incredible, nice finisher. Uh, overall, she's like fine because in theory she just starts as nine for eight because no, so it's, it's, she started six for eight, which is not optimal. Then she's uh, has bonus free damage because she counts as a warrior as well, so her passive will work. Uh, so you probably you for for example can kill something that is one power behind the tons of armor. Uh, but then she will be better and better over time so she will easily end up like 14 or 13 for 8 provision which is pretty good the problem is that she can be locked or killed because 6 power is no longer as much safe as it used to be uh, but it's a decent card the warriors struggle from having like the decent very good to decent to very good or super powerful cards in like low gold provision they had a lot of good cards like 10 and plus provision and they have a lot of good four five six provision slots but they didn't really have uh, anything that crucial on eight provision if you if you will go to like gold like yeah you can use skiordal which you'll probably use but it's kind of uh, this is kind of like already uh underperforming and all of the cards like Madman Lugos, Sigvald, these two cards doesn't really synergize with Warriors. Madman Lugos have seen some play, but he's also depending on the meta. meta. And Ulula can be just played, so uh, I think she will be played in general. Like this, some, some of these cards are fine, but they are not like uh, that good. And I think Ulula just wins with them. So you will uh, play her in Warrior decks and outside. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, and then we have solve 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 so very interesting card that i think has a meme potential and but the problem is that this meme is a single meme there is one meme you just play melusin you put it as much as possible as high as possible then play lippy and you have solve and then you kill her uh, melusin on your opponent's side with something like dandelion vainglory or Geralt or whatever so that's the meme uh, you will see billion of YouTubers that play it or posts on Reddit that wow look at my 100 power solve But this is meme category because uh, first it can be uh, Melusine can be just karate hit wave then it can be killed from a graveyard and then it can be uh, Then your solve can be irdent, you know But this card is very interesting very fun and I think there might be a deck that will use it in round one uh, and then Sigrid has right to use it in round three. And also, I think he also might play, might be played with Iced, but he also might unlock a deck without Iced, because uh, instead of relying everything of your Blaze of Glory combo, and Blaze of Glory combo will be super powerful if you can do it, because you used Iced and you uh, discard Solve, then you use it on like as like an Olaf or like a, even Raging Bear and then you Blaze of Glory or Utah to kill the beast and you create shit ton of points but it rely this deck needs to go for a short round free and have exactly Utah uh, Raging Bear 
in your deck and then it has to have solve in your hand and you also can't any of the two cards to be uh, drawn by uh, iced when you discard it, uh, solve. So there are a lot of things that have to go according to the plan, but it can create a lot of a lot of points. And this might be a deck, but I think there might be a deck with Sigrid right without iced as well. But and yeah, the meme is cool, but I think ultimately you will use it with just a little half and uh, raging bears. And that's maximum that you put in your deck because you want to have in warrior deck a lot of warriors and you don't really want to waste your uh, provisions and your deck slots with with beasts with only these cards energized with beast uh, but maybe maybe you just play two raging birds and that's it and you just play two because you don't want to brick but on the other hand if you play 11 for 11 immune uh, in some cases when you have to like when you accidentally drew both bears or your opponent milled your both bears you won't be super sad because in the end you have a 11 points that, that, that which is immune and i think it kind of kind of is a first step for cd project to try to make you play the cards like igni and scorch or curse of corruption and if the solve deck will be uh, very present those cards might find a way into the meta especially curse of corruption because also nilfgaard is probably going tall you have uh, nr that usually go tall with grace uh, so i think you might slot curse of corruption in your decks now and now we let's go to the monster deck and monster is seeing play of uh, wild hunt and frost the, these are the cards also the art as always it's obviously amazing. So first card, an L Aristocrat. Order dominance, move an enemy unit to the other row. At the end of your turn, spawn Frost one turn. On each enemy road to which Frost was applied this turn. So basically, it's an order move. Uh, move. So that's cool, because sometimes you will want to move uh, other units to benefit more from Frost. And basically, it's a bonus to points. It's like a two-point engine each turn, but not really because it extends the time so for example if your opponent if you have frost you use this you apply frost you use this your opponent can just pass and you don't get these two points also you have to play this then you need to apply frost so there are a lot of things that need to go according to plan uh, but then it's sort of two points per turn uh, but not really <laughs> So a lot of things have to go according to your way, but you have uh, also a bonus uh, ability of movement and it's for provision card. So I think, and also your opponent cannot have like armor or anything like this. So overall, I think it's a very well balanced card because in theory it can go super tall, super high, but in practice it will be on average probably like six plus, plus movement or maybe 8 plus movement, which is very good, but it's not nuts, I think. So I like this card. Then we have an L Slave Trader, gain vitality equal to the total duration of frost on the opponent side of the board, then infuse an enemy unit with at the end of your turn. If there's an enemy, an L Slave Trader, with high power, then your set own power to one, then lock self. So that's a very interesting ability. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be played. It's very Nilfgaard-like, I would say, uh, but it's very interesting. So basically, you can reset the set on power to one, to it's like an opponent unit and lock it, which is pretty good. But we need to put it on a very. You need to make ants and L slave trader very big, and usually this kind of decks doesn't really uh, play any boosts and your opponent but and you kind of want to use it on a high unit but you won't get there so you have to put it on like a unit that is probably like six power so maybe you can even remember that if, if you play it in the frost deck in a with uh, alongside uh k here not k here i forgot the dude name i have a anyway it will instantly be like five if you put a frost as well 
and then vitality, so it makes it six. So you can uh, you can instantly sort of lock and trust something that is five power, which is mean, which means that then it's gonna be like eight for five plus a rock on the opening throw. So it's pretty good. So overall, I think this card is like fine. But I don't think you will play more than one of in your uh, wild hand deck. Definitely. And sometimes you will just drop it. Again, depends on the meta. Again, depends on how the decks will be looked in the end. If you play a little bit of boost somehow, then this card makes it makes this card better, but I doubt. But maybe there will be a second version of wild hand that also goes with some spells, just to make value from the big resets of these cards. Uh. Maybe, we'll see. I don't know, but I doubt it. So I think you will play one off and maybe sometimes zero and you are happy that you can create it from other sources. Then we have Karantin Golden Child, a very beautiful card again. At the start of your turn, while well, in hand or deck, resets on power and boosts up by the damage by Frost in the last five enemy turns. Uh, so this card is nuts in a long round three. And if you have a red in. The problem of this card, a lot of problems with these cards, but a lot of a lot of interesting things are go about this card. Because this card can be basically a gourd, but higher. This card can go nuts. This card can go like 38 points, I think. If you if, if I remember correctly the math, it's like uh, no, you can even get more. In theory, if you play a lot of Karantirs from a lot of sources, you can create like five Karantirs and then they can deal then like two plus plus one from each of them. <laughs> yeah, wait, how, are they, how does it work? Can you make like a super obnoxious Karantir? Oh no, he not guaranteed anything. Increase the death damage by one. So in theory, you can make a meme that you play as many uh, readings as possible, and then you increase the frost to like deal seven per turn, and you have it on both rows. And then for five turns, if you deal 14, 50, you can make the you can make guaranteed to be like 70 power. <laughs> but of course, for this you have a lot of things. You have your deck to be suited for this or made for this. You have your, you need your opponent to play in the both rows and on both rows have no armor, no shield and anything and every time deal maximum damage for five turns and then this is big. <laughs> so of course this is a meme category, but in a serious stuff, most of the cases you want to pair it with Karantir, but sometimes uh, like the normal Karantir, uh, sorry, not Karantir, with Eredin. You really want to pair it with Eredin uh, because then you basically each stick makes it this one more power. Uh, but realistically, it will probably like two or maybe three on average with each, which means 16 for eight. That's like an average. It might be like 20 for eight and it's fair for a finisher if you look at in, a gourd, he's like uh, plus 12, so he's like 15 for 7 provision, and you have to make the whole deck around it. So this one is like 20, you have to play around whole deck around it, and in some matchups it will be absolutely garbage. There will be matchups when current here is just 1, which is absolutely horrible, and the thing is, gourd is always 15, like not always, but pretty much always, while current in can be sometimes literally one power for five, for eight. And also, if you don't get last say, it's very vulnerable to reset. However, usually monster wild hand decks are made so much into playing into round one super heavily and then you just win it. That I think you, you will pretty much almost always want to have a last say. But then you, there might be cases where you have to use the, for example, Eredin or some Frost uh, uh, earlier. So, yeah, in theory, this can be super powerful, but in practice, I don't think you will be 
that scared you shouldn't be that scared of the scarlet yeah it will be you will see a lot of posts on reddit when on the first day of the new expansion when everyone is greedy this card will be going to like 30 30 points and people will spam that it's op but then the meta will shift a little bit people will try to learn to how to play against it people will play armor people will play reset people will play against it more into round one they will bleed it from them and it won't be that problematic. Also, you can really, uh, if you go to a short round and uh, free, and uh, your opponent will just uh, play spells and your frost is sticking nothing, then again, current will be like two power. So I think you shouldn't be afraid of this card. And the last card, Tirnalia, Tirnalia, Tirnalia. Resilience, location, boost an ally to unit by zero, increase their value by the number of unique bronze white hand cards in your starting deck. Let's see how many we can uh, do at the moment. Wild hand, we remember uh, that we have also new card 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So currently maximum is 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, it's 11. But I don't know if you want to put all of it. Remember that you have to put just one off, so you don't have to two of this. But it's already 11 cards in your deck. And for example, this you need two. This probably you need two. So maybe you will play like boost nine. Let's say boost nine. Uh, because that's probably gonna be the, the kind of safe spot. And then order spawn a frost on your opponent melee and range rows equal to the amount lost on the last round transition. Then spawn and play red riders. So this is pretty cool because if you um, will gonna lose a lot of frost, then you can bank it and then use it on order. Which means that this card is just now it's just very very powerful in round two when you bleed because then you have a, like a nine ten power of boost. Which is not crazy, but it's fine. And then you can play a lot of frost. You can overcommit a little bit with the frost. You can go card down, and then your opponent start playing things, and you just uh, in short tail or uh, like four or five cards round three. You use the order. You get the full value from the frost, so you carry over like ten points, and then you carry over also a red rider, which is bonus like seven points. So you can easily carry over like 15 points, which is very powerful. It's better than like Sirinova carry over, but you probably don't use it in round one. You just, unless you want to 2 someone, you probably just uh, mm, go to a round three, get the benefit, it, play Kar Karantir, mm, the new one Karantir, and have this like a finisher. It's very powerful, but it's also very, very expensive. 12 provision is a lot and you have some deck restriction and turns out sometimes that you don't want to play that many bronzes in your deck but we will see definitely powerful overall i like both skellig and uh, monsters and i think especially monsters will be powerful in first two days of the expansion but you should wait and things will clear out and cards won't be that op after a week or two it happens every time if you want to win in early an early expansion, play here then, play Curse of Corruption, and it's always working. And also play greedy cards like Master of uh, Puppets, it's always working. Thank you very much for, for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow for patch notes.